Red clock is thought to be just a clock on the wall. It tells you how old you or what time it is or how old you are biologically. But nobody had thought that that clock was actually controlling time. You change the clock, it's not going to make you young again, right? That would be ridiculous. Uh, we, we disagree. We thought that if, if we move the clock backwards and restore the, the pattern of the methyl groups, and if we could get the sirtuin proteins that have been lost back to where they were when we were young, that could truly rejuvenate and set, send us back a decade or more. And so we looked and looked and we found a set of three genes that work safely. Um, we're standing on the shoulders of Juan Carlos Belmonte, who in 2016 showed that you could rejuvenate um, a, a short-lived mouse and make it live longer by putting in four different genes. We use three of those genes to reset the clock. And we can reset the clock in any part of the body. We chose the eye initially because the eye after a certain young age doesn't regenerate. But we thought if we could wind the clock back in the eye, it might grow back, it might get functional again, and we could even repair a broken nerve. And we, we did that. We pinched off the nerve at the back of the eye, turned on three what are called Yamanaka factors, which we believe reprogram the clock to be young. And now those nerves started to regrow back, back to the brain. That was exciting, but we did something else that was exciting, even more exciting. We said if we're actually working on aging and reversing it, we should be able to take an old mouse that can't see because it's blind with its retina being old and make those nerves at the back of the eye young again and the mouse should see again. And we did it and it worked. Mice could see again. And uh, it wasn't just a fluke because we could read the genes in the back of the eye. The genes were going back to the, the youthful structures. And we really did have the polish and the polish was working and the cell could read the genes again. It was brilliant. And we're starting to understand what's behind the clock, what's behind those hands that when we move them back, time actually goes backwards. Yeah. So this is the big breakthrough uh, that we've had in the last uh, few years in my lab. And it's, it's all in, in the book, actually. It was great to write the book while we were making these discoveries last year. Uh, what we found was that the, um, the reset program worked better than we thought, that it really went back to a young age. But it raises the, the question, where is that information held? So that, remember this Horvath clock is a bunch of chemicals called methyls on DNA. Now, if you were to turn a cell into a stem cell, which is what most people use these genes for, you'd strip all the methyl chemicals off. It would be like, instead of tuning a guitar, you'd rip the strings off. Now, we're not ripping the strings off. We're actually tuning the guitar so we, the cell takes off this methyl but leaves this one and adds one here. It's, it's as though the cell knows exactly how to play the symphony again and which, which scratches to remove, but not too deeply. Now, where that information is held, we don't know. Uh, we know it's there somewhere. We're looking, it could be at the level of chemicals on the DNA, it could be proteins that are involved in the wrapping, could be sirtuins, these proteins we've worked on, these longevity genes. But that's the holy grail right now, is to find where's that information locked up so we can open it up. We know that some organisms can already do that. We know that if you cut the arm off an axolotl, a salamander, it'll grow back. We know if you mush up a jellyfish, it'll grow back. But we've lost that ability. But I think we're tapping into those ancient abilities now.